Hey guys, welcome to the last part of the mini series. So in the part one, we have actually built this application. So there's a login. So if we log into the application and with the password, can sign in. Then I get to the default sign in page. It does not redirect me to the profile page. So I have to uh, type profile in the address bar. Then I will be directed to the profile page. And if you can remember last time we have added some data into the database, uh, the first name, last name and about me and updated that. And we saw that get updated in the database. But uh, when we logged in back, those data is not retrieved. And also this logout button, they don't work uh, as well. So if I want to go back to the login page, I have to say login, then I will get redirected back to the default amplify login screen and I have to click sign out and then I'm signed out. So the login process and the redirection, they have to be improved and we are going to add these features today. By the way guys, this is the second part of the blog. And if you visit this link, you will see that I will put that into the description. So today we will allow users to update the profile image because today we don't have a profile image and we will do it in a secure manner and let's load the save user data as you have seen the load data is not loading right now and let's implement an auth guard so this is basically once you logged in it should avoid users to get back to the login page and also when you are not logged in it should not allow users to get back to the profile page right and then let's add the automatic redirection so once the user is signed in uh, we'll remove that default page and we'll automatically direct the users to the profile page right so let's get started and i have added all those steps in the blog post so let's keep this in a side and here i am in my project so let's see what we have to do first so first step is we are going to configure the storage category and actually we are going to add the uploading profile image feature. So in order to do that, we have to configure the storage category in Amplify. So how can you do that? It's just a matter of calling this one line of code with AWS Amplify CLI. So Amplify add storage, copy that and come back here. I will stop the server, clear the screen. Make sure you are in your directory hit enter okay, then it will ask select the one from the below mentioning no i don't want a noise SQL database but i want a s3 bucket with images audio and video select that option so give a friendly name but i will just select the default one that provides and bucket name also i will accept the default one if you're adding a custom one make sure that's a unique one and now it will ask who should have access so in our case let's assume the profile image can only be viewed by the authenticated user so in that case i will select auth users only and what kind of actions do you want to do for the uh, auth users well they want both uh, read and write so that means they can upload it they can delete and also they can view the image okay that's done so after that type amplify push amplify push so that will create all the resources on AWS. So it's gonna ask, okay, these are things that's going to create auth, no change, API, no change, but storage, they are going to create it. So hit yes and accept it. So that's gonna create an S3 bucket on AWS. Okay, so while it's creating, I will go back to my blog. And now we have to update the view. So in our view of the profile component, currently we don't have a section to upload the profile image, right? And here we are going to use two directive or two component from Amplify. The first component is called Amplify S3 image. And the second one is Amplify Photo Picker. Well, as the name implies, Amplify Photo Picker give you a full blown image uploading capabilities. So you, you get a button to upload the image and you get to choose whatever the image you want. And, it, and once you upload it, it will send that to your S3 bucket, right? An S3 image is basically to view that particular uploaded image. Why can't we use a normal image SRC here, guys? Well, basically, since we are allowing only for the logged in user to view his or her profile image, or in other words, we are setting the storage option level to private, when we are displaying the image, we have to make sure to add that 
IAM signature of that profile image. Otherwise, it's not going to show. If you can remember in the very first video of this series, part one I showed you, we cannot just access the image with the S3 bucket reference. You have to pass in the signature of the logged in user. Only then you can see it. So this will make that process quite simple. We just have to pass the image URL and this will add all the signature part and display the image. So what does it say? Okay, go to the profile component and uh, paste this information or the paste this particular div on top of the form tag. So let's copy that. Okay, meanwhile, our S3 bucket is properly configured. So it's completed, that's good. So let's go to our profile component HTML. And before the font tag, let's add some spaces. And here, let's paste in. So this is the code we pasted here. As you can see, we have added a icon as well. So this is basically once the image is uploaded, we will display a simple icon for them to like re-upload or change their image if they want. And once they click this image icon, we will call a method called edit photo. We will look that in a bit. And here's our S3 image part. And for S3 image, we are passing the user's image URL. And we are going to set the level to private. So this is going to be a private image. Only the logged in user can see that. So what are the other parameters that you can pass here? You can pass a public. That means it's available for all the authenticated and unauthenticated users. If you pass uh, protected, so that means uh, only the logged in user can upload the image, but anyone can view it. Right? But in our case, let's stick to private. All right. So photo figure again, we have another event that is mean that is uploaded. So this event get called once the image has been uploaded. So if it is successfully uploaded, it's going to call this on image upload event. This will pass the image information, basically this three image URL, and we will save that in our database. So later on when the user logged in, we can get that database and use this amplifies three image to pass it in and display the image, right? Okay, so this part is done. So we're gonna have to add those event handlers or the methods. So here we have, you have to go to profile component.ts. So I will go to profile component.ts file here. And so I added a show photo and for user created uh, variables here. And inside our component, we have to add these uh, methods. First one is on image uploader, the one we just described, right? So this will get called once the image is successfully added and let's add this uh, edit photo as well so once you click that small icon it will switch to the upload view now let's update the update profile function to pass in the image url as well if you can remember we don't have the image url so far but now that we have the image url so add that attribute as well all right and uh, by the way uh, Last time we added only the create user, but uh, now we need to update the user as well. Now if they want to update the information, we're going to have to update the information. So in order that uh, we just don't want to call just create user, but instead let's create a method that returns either update user or create user. These are basically the functions in the API. And let's take them dynamically by uh, calling that method. So I will replace this one with this one. So API instead of create user, we're going to get with the updated or created attributes. So let me take that out. Now let's move on to a loading save data. So yet we have not added the loading part of the save data. So in order to load the data, we have to use ng on init, right? So ng on init, we already have uh, this currently authenticated user API call, which we will get the username of the currently authenticated user and display it uh, on our navigation bar, right? if you can remember. So here we have to call API again and uh, get the user information. So once we got the information, we have to populate our use object so which is this one so this is the user object that we have bound to the form 
So once we populate this user object, it will get rebound to the form automatically. So that's what we are going to accomplish here. So if I uh, open this up a little bit, let's uh, replace it with this code. I'm going to replace this entire thing. So have a look. Authenticated user, once it is authenticated, we grab the username and the user ID as usual. And we are going to call get user from our API, passing in the user ID, which we got from the authenticated user. And then that will get the information of the user. So if there's a result, then what we're going to do is uh, the user is already created, that means. So we set that flag and we are going to populate the user object with the user ID, username, first name, last name, bio, and image. Beautiful. So let's see if these things works properly. So I will get into my console and say ng serve. Oh, it's compiled correctly. So that's good. So uh, let's go to our page and refresh it. Okay, it all works. Uh, I'm just on and my password, sign in. Okay, still the redirection is not there. We'll add that profile. Beautiful. So you can see once the user is not logged in, you will see uh, this photo selector or photo picker. And you can see it has grabbed my username and uh, the last name and about me from the database and already showed it here. So these are the data that we saved from the last time, right? So let's see if our profile image works. So I will choose for image. Mm, okay, this one looks all right. So then I have the option to click upload photo. So just click that button. Okay, let's see. All right, so it is loading. Okay, nice. Let's do a full update. So that will uh, save my image URL as well. And if we now refresh the page, should probably get the image URL. There you go, beautiful. How about if we edit first name or the information here? Will that still work? So let's refresh that. There you go, so those uh, changes are also persisting. Right now the logout doesn't work. And if I go to login page, so again, I get to this default page, which I don't want, right? So let's follow along the blog. So now we're going to want to add the uh, logout functionality. So in order to do that, uh, we have to import Angular router up top. So I've already imported that into the profile component. So this line, okay, make sure you import that. So let's add this uh, logout function. Copy that and uh, just add somewhere maybe up here. So what does this logout function does? So it's going to basically uh, signing out the user by calling the auth API. And uh, we call it global true. And once it is successfully logged out, we will direct users to the auth page, right? So let's reference this from our component HTML. So right now our logout function is, okay, I have already added that. So, and this is not the, in the code right now, uh, just add the click event and reference the logout. So let's see if that works. And I will click logout. Okay, now we are straightly logged out and uh, go back to the login page. But how about like if I type profile, then it tries to uh, go into the page, but nothing is loaded. Probably we will get a lot of errors in the console. I'm not going to look at it. So let's avoid that. So we're going to have to create some auth guards that will check that the user is always authenticated if we want to navigate to the profile page, right? We're going to want to create an auth guard. Uh, so I will use Angular CLI. So let me clear the screen and paste this in ngg guard auth. So that will create auth guard in the app folder. And let's see, there you go. So this is the one. So here, let's replace that content with this code replace entire code with that save it so let's have a look so basically from up top uh, we are requiring router and we are getting the auth as well from amplify library an auth guard is basically we are implementing can activate interface so can activate interface uh, we will refer it at the routing module we'll do that in a bit but before that in can activate method, what it will 
what it will check is it will it's going to call this uh, current authenticated user api and it does not bypass the cache so that means it will check whether the user is already authenticated and if that information is available in the local storage so that will take that from the local storage if not it will go to the back in and get that information right and then if there are user then you will resolve it true and if there's not you will resolve it false that means you cannot go to the profile page and you will be redirected back to the login page right so let's use this auth guard in our routing module so if you scroll down a little bit so it says okay go to app.routing.module.ts it is this one and here we have to uh, import the auth guard up top just import it up here and get that auth guard and add a new attribute called can activate and put that into the array auth guard all right so with this change it will always check whether the use is authenticated and if and only if the use is authenticated it will render the profile component so together with that we'll do the last configuration as well so that is nothing but uh, automatic redirection from the login page once the user is logged in right so with that our mini series is finished so let's add that trial real fast and check everything so i will go to earth component and i will go to the js file so in the constructor we are going to listening into some auth events right? we can simply do that with amplify library so that will the amplify library is listening into the auth events using a hub uh, and with the amplify angular library we can easily reference it with auth state, auth state change right so what we have to do is we have to replace this constructor code in our application so uh, on top we have to import these two files so there is nothing but the amplify service from aws amplify angular and the uh, router module so, uh, let's import that up top here and here in the constructor just copy the entire code and replace it here so it's basically calling the amplify service that is getting from the amplify angular library and you have an event called auth state change so we are subscribing to that event and with that event it will give you the state of the authentication right so if that state is equal to signed in you get other states like signing out etc right you can refer the documentation for other events so now i'm interested in signed in event if that this guy is signed in then we are routing that user to the profile page beautiful so let's check this guys clear screen and type ng serve okay it's compiled properly so let's get back here and uh, refresh the page try to log in so once i logged in i should automatically get redirected as you can see we get automatically redirected but for a split second you have seen that default sign out or sign in page from amplify we don't want that right because we don't want that intermediate uh, transition page so let's remove that well we can easily do that by adding an input parameter to our amplify authenticator directive or the component so go to your auth and auth component that i mentioned in the blog as well maybe i have not oh yeah i think i have added right you can see uh, you can still see the uh, that default sign in page so here we just have to pass in an input called hide the greetings component so that's simple so get your component and paste that in so that is nothing but hide and that greeting component save that so with this i think everything should work smoothly uh, let's log in and just on and sign in you see there's no any greeting page or any intermediary space uh, pages and i got redirected to the my profile page nice let's see uh, if our auth guards are working if i try to go log in here it doesn't load that page and instead it redirect me back to the profile page right and let's log out and let's try to access profile page without having to log in we say we get redirected back to the login page okay i think now almost all the features are working
so with that we are going to conclude this mini series and i hope you guys enjoyed this and if you like these videos and this content please make sure that you subscribe to my channel and share this video like my content and thank you very much <laughs>